When you get started in the world of web security, surely one of the first things that you are going to learn are SQL injections. SQL injections are something that you should not skip in your learning journey, not because of how important they are, but because they will give you a solid learning base of many other injection attacks. Today, you will learn how to utilize an SQL injection vulnerability to bypass a login page. Let's get started. Here is the login page that we are going to attack in this video. It's very simple. It's only asking for a username and password. If you enter a wrong username and password, you will be met with the message, Login failed, please try again. And if you enter the correct username and password, you will be redirected to the admin page. Now you may be wondering, what is this line that you are seeing right here? This is the statement that will be sent to the database to verify our login information. The way that the database works on this application is that we have two things. We have the application interface hosted on the server, and we have the user information hosted on the database. And the way we can retrieve information from the database is by sending information to the server by filling this form, and then the server will send a request to the database to retrieve that information. In this login example, the information that we are trying to retrieve are inside the users table. That's why we have select star from users. The star basically means select every column possible from the table named users. In this case, it's going to retrieve the ID, the username, and the password of the user. But which users is it going to retrieve? Well, the answer to that can be found after the where keyword. You see, we have username equals A, and password equals A. Well, that basically means we are only trying to retrieve the users that have a username A and at the same time the password A. So to explain the entire statement here, the entire query that the server is going to ask the database is, retrieve every user from the users table that have a username equal to this string and the same time have a password equal to this string. When the database receives this request, it will go through all the users in the users table, user by user, and check if anyone with those specific credentials match, and the database will send back an entire list of users to the server. And the logic when the response comes back from the database is, if the database says that user with this specific username and password exists, then I will let you log in. If no users exist, you will not log in. So let us demonstrate with a legitimate example. I know that the correct username is admin, and his password is the word password. Now, if we keep the username as admin and intentionally put a wrong password, we see that we get the login failed error. That's because the database was trying to check every row if any user has the username admin and the password hello world. But it did not find any, so the server did not allow us to access the admin panel. Now, how can we trick the database into returning the admin user to the server without us knowing any usernames and passwords? Remember what I told you earlier about the where statement used in the query? Well, we are going to abuse that functionality. Let me explain. Queries do exactly what we tell them to do. For example, if we tell the database to select all the users where the letter A is equal to the letter A, it will go through all rows in the database and in each row it will ask itself, does this row fit my WHERE criteria? And my WHERE criteria is, is the letter A equal to the letter A? The answer is yes, so of course that row is included in the results. The following row will go through the same comparison, and it will have the same outcome. I know this sounds silly, but hold on, let me cook. In our original statement, in the admin login comparison, what if we can change the comparison to something that will force the condition to be always true, but at the same time without having the correct username nor password? Let's take a look at our current query. Select star from users, where username equals our input and password equals our input. The key to bypass this comparison is the use of the single quotes in the query. This will allow us to change the comparison. Here is how. Let's forget about the password comparison for a second now, and let's focus on the username part. What if we can make this logic of the comparison different by making it username equals empty string, or the letter A is equal to the letter A? 
Now, what would happen in this comparison? When the database handles this request, it will go through all the rows and look at the where condition. In the where condition, we have username equals empty string. Well, that's false because the username is never empty. But at the same time, we have a second condition, which is the letter A equals the letter A, which conveniently enough is always true. So with that outcome, even though we don't have any correct username, the database will give us back all the rows in the table. Maybe it's worth mentioning if you are not familiar with the syntax, but the OR between the two comparisons means only one of the conditions is sufficient for the WHERE condition to be true. We also have the AND condition, which unlike the OR condition, requires both statements to be true for the entire WHERE statement to be true. Now, how can we implement this always true comparison in our login page? Well, it's pretty simple. Just look at the query that we created earlier. Username equals empty string, or the letter A is equal to the letter A. If we look back at the query that will be taken by the server, we see username equals single quote input string single quote. So logically, the string that we have to input in the login form to have this exact query is literally the string single quote or single quote, the letter A single quote equals single quote, the letter A. Now that we got the username part out of the way, we can input the exact same injection string in the password field. Finally, we will have this neat query that will allow us to log in without knowing the username nor the password. Let's see this injection in action in our login page. As you can see, the query was successful and we have managed to enter the admin zone. Another cool thing that I would like to show you in login bypass using SQL injections are comments. In SQL queries, there are certain characters that can be used as comments, which means as soon as you add that specific character, the rest of the mine will not be taken into consideration by the query. People usually use it to make the query clearer or to remember stuff, but our purpose today is to use it to bypass a login. Let's look at our query. In the beginning, we said that we know that the username is named admin, so in that case, we can perform an SQL injection using the username only without needing any special string to bypass the password verification process. Here's how. In our input, we add the string admin and then we close our single quote and then add two dash symbols. And that's it. That's all we need to do. Whatever we write after the two dashes will not count in the query. The reason why this works is that when the database is comparing each row, it will only return rows fitting the condition username equals admin. And it will consider the rest of the query, the password equals something part as a comment, which is exactly what we want. We can demonstrate that in our application. And as you can see, it works, even though the password is completely wrong. You seem to be a fan of pen testing since you are still watching. So here is another web application pen testing video that will teach you something about becoming a better hacker.